so now uh, you know uh, uh, now i just want to you know go ahead with the give you give an overview of how do we create and while i'm creating i'm going to explain uh, uh, what i'm going to do why what are the key aspects of azure function now the azure function is a high level term, right? it has multiple sub components in that so we'll try to cover that during next 15 minutes to to see uh, how to you know create as a function what is to be taken care and how it so uh, if no doubts right so we will you know quickly jump to that uh, demo okay so now as i said you know i will cover this uh, 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 session now next 15 minutes we will focus on uh, creating an azure function and write a simple uh, uh, a function which which is triggered based on a timer and then it just print out the current date and date timestamp. Okay. So uh, while we're creating this, I will explain a few more key terminologies and what do we what to take care of when creating it so that you know you get an idea of uh, what are the things to take to take care. Okay. Okay. So so uh, yeah, so what I was saying is this uh, what I've done is you know, I'll go back. So this is the function app. Uh, the section where I can create a new function app. So the first thing I have to do is I have to create, I have select a resource group. So I have an existing resource group, which I'm selecting here. You can as well go ahead and create a new one. And I'm going to give uh, the name of my uh, function app. Uh, so now uh, the key point here at this point you need to understand is the, <coughs> the name of the function app is academy hyphen function. Okay. So that's a function app name, right? This is not your function itself, right? One, you can have Azure function app, which will have internally multiple functions, each of them having their own triggers and uh, code, okay? So right now we're just creating a function app, which is like your overall container or overall uh, group of all the functions that you're going to create. Okay, so again here, uh, you, it, it can be a simple code base or if you are using dockers and you know, you want to make it uh, containerized, you can say do, do container. Here I'm going to use the code. I'm going to say, I'm going to use, these are the technologies that you can create Azure function with. Uh, again, I'm going to use .NET here, uh, region that you can select. Now, once you do that, so every function app needs to connect to a storage account. Uh, basically, it, it will use it for its basic, uh, uh, you know, kind of storage and temporary storage, everything. So now here I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to allow it to create a new storage account. Uh, uh, this is basically for its uh, kind of to, to take care of its uh, running and, and details around that. So again, here I'm going to select the operating system, again, uh, Linux or Windows. So I'm going to select Windows here. And next comes the plan type. So, so plan type is consumption is what I was talking about. Consumption is wherein uh, you are charged based on the uh, consumption of your Azure function. So as I said, you can run it 24, you can keep it active 24 hours, but if you're only getting 10 requests a day, you'll be charged only for those 10 requests. That's a consumption plan. right? So similarly, there is an, you can, instead of creating a consumption plan, we can as well use a app service plan, which is similar to your app services. When you're creating an app service, you can you can select a uh, size SKU and the size, and your cost is depending on the SKU. So if you see here, this is what I was telling other other day other time in the app service is here here I'm saying that okay, you give me a server which is 1.75 GB, which has a 1.75 GB of RAM. Right, and I'm saying that I need this server with so and so. So it, this effectively becomes an app service, which is focused, which is running your function app. Right. So generally, in most cases, you know, uh, running it as a consumption makes sense uh, or would work in most cases because of the designs. The <coughs> the function app is generally used for uh, you know up to process a set of data and send it off to the next uh, when it's basically trigger based right so when, when something happens in other external systems it triggers Azure function it processes and saves it into db or, or sends it to the next stage right so consumption plan makes sense and generally Azure functions is uh, is developed where you need a simple processing which doesn't take time and there's a timeout of 10 minutes so 
if your Azure function is taking more than 10 minutes to process each request, it will get timed out. So generally, you know, the an Azure, any Azure function should not take you know, a few a few seconds, a few minutes to process. Okay, so example, it could be you know you're getting a file dump from some some third party application, and you want to you're getting a CSV file, and you want to process the CSV file and save it onto a DB, right? Now this is where Azure function may come into picture because you can ask you know save this file in this in this blob storage, and then have a trigger for this Azure function that whenever a new file comes into storage, you go ahead and process that. Example. So that's a scenario where you can use a Azure function with serverless or or as a <coughs> consumption plan, right? So I, again, I'm going to use uh, consumption here, uh, and then I'm going to say networking. So again, networking is your standard where you want to secure your Azure function to ensure uh, all the basic security and network. If you want to run your function inside a virtual network or VNet, VPN, so because any architecture you provide, any any design we provide, it has to even include your virtual networks and your networking side to ensure the the data is secure and your transactions are secure so we need to ensure uh, the azure function is put inside a vnet or vpn or to ensure that part of it monitoring is basically you know monitoring is where we can use app insights to monitor uh, where everything about what happens in the azure function you can monitor it using app insights uh, again i'm resembling it here it it has a cost impact when you use an uh, app insights these are tags that for you to identify what is this Azure function. And finally, I'm going to say uh, create. So here it gives you an overview of what is there. And if you if you know about ARM templates and if you're creating multiple Azure functions, you can download a template to save it as a template uh, for and then execute the same create multiple Azure functions with different different names based on your need. Right. So I'm going to say create. And once it is created, we will quickly you know go ahead and Right, uh, as I said, create. Uh, now, what we're creating is this Azure function. Uh, so it 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 will not have any any functions in it. It's just a, as I said, a placeholder or a, or a grouping of set of functions that you're going to develop. Yeah, Azure function as such is just an empty container with with nothing in it, right? So once it is created, we are going to create the individual functions based on the need. So you can have one Azure function app and it can have 10 or 20 functions uh, specifically built for each purpose or each need of your business. Okay, so, so again, that's where you know you can group them. You can have multi one Azure func uh, multiple Azure functions, each having a set of uh, functionality grouped under each of them. So example, all the incoming CSV files you can process as one Azure function, all the they say at uh, uh, Excel files as another Azure function. So it depends on how you want to design and how you want to uh, process them uh, as individual functions, right? So now uh, let's see if it, it is still creating it here. Yeah. So now it is done. So if once it, I can say go to resource. So as I said, you know, uh, uh, yeah. So here the Azure function is created, and I can do a browse. It just opens up the default page. This my Azure function is up and running, so everything is fine. But I cannot do anything here because it's just a sample landing page, right? So now this is where I have something called a functions. So an Azure function app can have multiple functions. Right now, what I've done here is when I'm creating Azure function, I'm said I want to use a .NET code. So once I start creating an Azure individual functions, all of them will start using that particular uh, uh, technology as a some as the code. So now when I'm developing the Azure function, there are many ways of developing it. One, you know, I can develop it in the portal itself, which is what I'm going to do now, uh, and then you know you could. Uh, you could develop in, in your standard tools, any any visuals, any editors, and then you use your use your source control to save the source code there and deploy it to Azure Functions. So that's more a uh, more a practical or more the uh, general way we use. Uh, we generally don't develop in portal. Here we are just for us to learn Azure Function. I'm doing it, but generally the source code will be in the source control like Git or Azure Repos or GitHub, and you use your IDs to develop, multiple developers will work on it. 
and it gets deployed to uh, the Azure the Azure function in the portal. Okay, so so I'm going to say okay, I'm going to develop in the portal, and next comes I want I have to select the trigger. So there are many triggers here. So as you see here, HTTP trigger is basically an endpoint, which anybody can hit the HTTP API, like an API, and it gets, the Azure function gets triggered. A timer is, it, you can set, set a schedule, a timer, and it keeps triggering it every, every, every time the schedule hits, right? So, and again, there are queue storage. Queue storage is whenever there's a new entry, you can create Azure queues. And then whenever there's a new entry into the queue, it triggers the Azure function. And your Azure function can pick up the items in the queue and start processing it. Similarly, your blobs, your event, and most of the standard uh, uh, services uh, from Azure, you can have a trigger point, including something like RabbitMQ or SignalR, various other services. Okay, So again, here I'm going to use that uh, timer-based. I'm going to give a name. Okay, so timer demo. So uh, again, just to uh, let you know, means this is the function app name and uh, academy hyphen function is the name of the function app, which has a function called timer demo function, right? Both are, this is what is going to have the logic and execute. This is just a container for all this, all the functions. Right. And here I'm going to schedule uh, it to use, you know, I'm adding it something like every half a, every, uh, uh, every half, a, half an hour is the schedule there. It uses a something called, this is the style, this is the syntax, it's a cron expression, second, every second minute and hours. So that's just, I will share a link on this. So you can uh, go ahead and understand how it works. So I'll so go ahead and create. So once this is created, since I've said I'm going to develop it in the portal, uh, I will be uh, able to uh, write the code, test it, and do everything here. So once I have it, now if I go, now it is created, the function app is created, now I'll say code and test. Right, so now what it has is yes. So I have the sample initial c -sharp code, which I can start writing and modifying it here. So example, now this is a standard set of files that you get in any, even when you develop using outside the portal, you will have a CSX file, which is your function app code. And you'll have the function.js, which, which will have the basic settings of your, whether it's a name of your, uh, uh, name of your uh, function app uh, function, and what is the type of trigger, what is the schedule and everything, okay? This is the settings basically, and you know you will have run.cx. So here I'm basically it says you know the there's a simple log which says that this time was triggered, and it it just printers the uh, current date and date and time. So now when I say test and run, uh, right? So it uh, I'll say run. So now you can see uh, I think I've given stars. I think every second it will keep um, uh, printing the logs. So see, see a primary function executed. So it keeps, see, if you can see here, this is executed at every second it is trying to execute and it will, it is just logging, writing the log here. So now this is the place where you can, uh, you will have the logic. So example, right? One other thing we have seen here is something called binding. Bindings, right? So bindings are, let's say you have a trigger for a timer in this case, right? Uh, if you have a trigger for, uh, let's say a blob storage, right? So a uh, bindings is a way to use, now every Azure function will have a trigger and a binding. Trigger is what is the event when this function should be triggered. Binding is what is the information it has to get from the triggering system, example, right? So, so I have a, let's say I have Azure blob storage, right? And in blob storage, whenever a CSV file comes in, I want it to trigger Azure function, right? So the trigger is whenever a new file is, is dumped into a file, into a storage, I want it to trigger the Azure function. Now, binding will help you. You, when you, when you have a new file, you should also get to know what, what was the file name, what was the path, and few additional information so that you can process that particular file. Because 
let's say in a, in a big system, you will have thousands of files dumped every second, every minute. So how do you know which file was to process, right? So binding will help you to, you can configure the bindings in, in, a, in Azure function to say that whenever Azure storage is, whenever Azure storage is uh, uh, triggered, Azure storage file is, is dumped and it, it triggers, you can also pass information like the meta information, like the file name or path or everything, which will tell you, okay, this was the file name which was dumped and you can use that to process. Without the binding, right? So what would happen is uh, you have Azure function, you have a trigger, right? For Azure blob storage. So when the trigger happens, you will have to go back and connect to the storage to figure out which file was dumped or which file was recently uploaded. So all the logic to figure out what file was dumped, when was it dumped, all this logic is completely avoided by using bindings. So you can say that whenever a file is dumped, pass this XYZ information like file name, file path, everything as part of the binding, which you will get as an input into your Azure function, right? So you will get, here you're getting timer info because you know it's a timer base, but if you use a blob storage, you will get details of the blob and what file name and few, any information specific to that event. You will get that information, which you can start using. You know exactly what was triggered, which file was dumped. You start processing from there. So that is the reason we need to use bindings in any given uh, uh, function. And other thing you need to know is the direction. So every Azure function can have bindings which are inbound and outbound. So example, Azure function can take an input from a CSU file it can generate a JSON file and send it as an output to someone else to process, right? So you can have a binding which are inbound, you can have a binding which are outbound, right? So, so uh, that, is the, that is the important thing about any function is you should, you should know the triggers, the bindings, the inbound and outbound bindings, and how to configure the binding information to be processed or bit it again, depends on the event and Right. So uh, once you have this, you know, uh, uh, once I have done the code and test, I'll be able to, uh, you know, this is my overall, as I said, you have, a, I have a trigger, I have a timer based trigger. And right now I don't have any input bindings. It's just a timer. So I can say my uh, uh, binding is, as I said, I can say my, I, I want to, whenever a timer is triggered, I want to bind it to Azure blob storage for this blob account and these details. So what happens is whenever a timer is triggered, it will send this information, what you configure as an input, which can be picked up by your function, process it and send it as an output, which you can again configure saying that I want to put my output into a particular blob storage or various other, these third party systems, anywhere you want to send. So basically I want to take it, let's say generally, you know, uh, one scenario is you want to take it from the service bus and send it to a send grid. Service bus is your queue, it's kind of a queue where you can you can keep sending. And send grid is the one which sends you emails, which, which, can, you, which, which you can use to send emails. So as a function can pick up, can get triggered. You can pick up a value from service bus, process it, create the email content, send it to send grid so that email can be sent. So that's one scenario where you can use uh, uh, this bindings. Input binding is your uh, service bus queue to this, to know which queue, which topic was updated. Output is your email content, which can be sent to send grid so that email can be sent. And Azure function will take care of processing the queue, getting the two fields, CC field, email content, create the content, pass it on to your output. Okay, so finally monitoring, if you, have, if you enable the monitoring using App Insights, you'll be able to see the complete live uh, kind of details about what logs, what is happening with other functions, errors, exceptions, everything can be seen. And function key is basically, you know, security side of it to, to know who can, uh, who can um, you know, basically to validate your, if somebody is triggering, they, they will have to pass a particular key or to ensure it is, come, it is being triggered by a right source. So you can have a function case created, which you can share it with your uh, the source uh, systems to trigger it using the key, right? So that is mo more to secure the application or secure Azure function. Okay, so this is you know uh, just to just summarize when you're creating an Azure function. Okay, first thing is you're going to create a function app. 
function app can have multiple functions and each function will have uh, uh, will have a, a trigger it will have a trigger it will have in, inbound uh, bindings it will have outbound bindings and it will have the logic inside the function right so irrespective of the type of trigger or everything this is a structure that every function app will have every function will have in a function app okay now each function app uh, each function and now uh, i'm in a function app now i'm not in individual function so here is where uh, you can even take care of the scale out and scale in right so enforce scale out limit so example right i'm saying maximum scale up to 200 which effect kind of what it means is if you get 200 requests you can maximum process 200 requests at a time if you get 210 200 will process 10 will wait for one of these 200 to get out so, so i'm just giving an oh, high level uh, example right so this is a, a scale out and why a scale up is not there because we're not using an app service plan we're using a consumption plan if you use an app service plan we'll have a scale up wherein you can increase the number of uh, functions also example right now there's one instance of azure function which can execute 20 requests 200 requests but if you have a scale app service plan and you have a scale up you can have uh, when you have 400 requests you can say spin up one more azure function two service two instances of azure functions each processing 200 so you you suddenly increase your processing capacity again it has a cost impact but that is a uh, that is a scale out and scale in option you can uh, you know configure that and use a use app service plan instead of consumption plan if you want to scale up and scale up okay so uh, this is what you know i wanted to cover and you know uh, in this session focused on creating an azure function and understanding basics and creating azure functions using uh, portal as i say in future sessions we will have uh, other uh, type where we have more uh, more into code and hands on and understand each trigger type binding type but uh, you know, this is what i wanted to cover here